Get ready with me while I tell you about how an Ancestry DNA kit is putting my grandma in prison. <laughs> yeah, these DNA tests can do a lot more than tell you if you're 5% Italian. Between overreaching health insights and catastrophic privacy issues, the cracks are starting to show. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the baby garnet story, exposing the scientific holes behind these health insights and how 23andMe might just be doing its best Titanic impression very soon. This creator is Jenna Rose, whose friend did one of these genetic ancestry tests and so she thought it would be a fun thing to try but without knowing what kind of Pandora's box she was about to open. See, alongside the results, she got something people don't usually get, a call from the police. They informed Jenna that her DNA had been linked to a 25-year-old mystery crime in her town in Michigan. A deceased baby had sadly been found in a public restroom next to Lake Garnet and then was therefore nicknamed Baby Garnet. The thing is, Jenna had heard of this case before, but because of this ancestry test, the police had figured out that the perpetrator was actually her grandma. Now, I'm glad a cold case like this can get solved with the right person landing behind bars, but wait a minute. How did the police get hold of the DNA in the first place to match it to the crime. Many people taking these tests don't realize that all companies that hold DNA data have to comply with warrant requests. Family Tree DNA specifically, which Jenna took, doesn't even need a warrant as users have to opt out from law enforcement matching for them not to be searchable by default. This might all seem great in principle, but what if someone else's DNA gets mislabeled to your name in the lab, or someone else's DNA gets sent with your specific name on it? There's nobody there with you at home to make sure it's your swab that goes into the pot with your label on it. If this carries on, there will be false accusations and potentially even wrongful convictions because of it, no matter which testing company that you use. But what about what's happening right now? See, as fun as it would be to find out you have a long lost great aunt from the Congo, it has limited appeal. After figuring that out, these companies didn't just want spaghetti, they wanted the full noodle soup, health, insights. But wait a minute, the FDA initially banned 23andMe's ability to market genetic tests in the past on the grounds that they couldn't accurately predict disease risk. They then had to backtrack on that thanks to disclaimers that these tests are mainly just for fun and shouldn't be used for diagnostic testing. This disclaimer is still in place even though the FDA has now approved 23andMe to do genetic health risk tests and provide the report. This ranges all the way from not useful to straight up dangerous. Like if I'm low risk for getting high cholesterol, then should I eat more cheeseburgers? Or insights that I can't do anything about, like being told that I have Alzheimer's disease and now there's no way for me to unknow what could be coming for me in later life. What's even crazier is there's FDA approval for them to test for breast cancer genes BRCA1 and 2, but they just test for three variants when there are over a thousand. That means this test could be negative with someone feeling reassured and they still have this gene that gives them up to a 75% lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. If you think of your entire genome as a house, that's like searching the broom cupboard for the remote and saying that it's definitely not there. Whereas clinical tests frequently would check the whole house, which is the equivalent of looking at the genome or exome. The complexity of all this is exactly why these patients are much better suited seeing a doctor for clinical diagnostic testing rather than spitting in a tube at home. And in case that wasn't enough, there's the data breaches. In 2023, hackers broke into 23andMe's servers and stole data from up to 7 million profiles that had opted in to the DNA relatives function. They had a particular interest for users of Chinese and Ashkenazi Jewish descent and then went ahead and sold the data on the dark web. You might then ask, who would actually buy this data? Well, that isn't quite clear, but what we do know is that Patrick Chung, an ex-23andMe board member, told Fast Company, 
And I quote, once you have the data, the company does actually become the Google of personalized healthcare. What does that mean? Well, it means that the data bank of your DNA would be very useful for pharmaceutical and insurance companies to know who to advertise to and more importantly, who to decline. In the US, there are laws preventing genetic discrimination for health insurance, but how will they be enforced? And what about long-term care or disability insurance that don't have the same restrictions? This just gets wilder because in one of the deleted home genetic testing companies' disclaimers was an ironic warning against their competitors saying genetic information that you share with others could be used against your interests. You should be careful about sharing your genetic information with others. Let's say you got past that and you thought that the company will stick to its privacy promises, which is a stretch. But what happens to this data bank if the company goes under? In September 2024, seven of 23andMe's independent board members resigned and they had to lay off 40% of their staff and cut funding to their therapeutics division that was trying to help research new cancer drugs. If a company then buys them out, will they maintain the current safeguards for consumer data or change the privacy policy completely to take the company in a different direction. Either way, if me or a family member had our data with them, I would be taking the chance while we still can to make sure that it is deleted off their servers permanently. What's interesting is that not even every citizen would have to do these tests for them to map out the individual's families as they can predict your genome simply if enough members of your family have actually done this test as well. To add on, it's important that if you have a concern about your health, you follow the disclaimer, see a suitably qualified doctor rather than using the just for fun test as a substitute. After all, the most valuable part of this test isn't what it can do for you, but what your data can do for them.